morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be. My name's Ed and welcome to Let's Go Fishing. Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make those little floating beads that I used on the beach the other day, fishing for brim. And um, they're quite simple to make. Now, believe it or not, they're, be they're made from ear plugs, right? These ear plugs, you can get, get them in all different colours, you know, and sizes too. Um, now, these ear plugs, they're already coloured, so you don't have to paint them. And it's not like normal foam, little foam, foam balls or whatever, because that foam sort of tends to break away in the surf or in the water sometimes. And... Um, you know, these ones will, will last and last. So what we're going to do, first of all, I'll show you what I normally do. I just cut the tip off them. And, um, and after cutting the tip off them, we just round it off as best we can. And when you cut them, they'll squash up, but they'll expand to their original form original size now you just cut what I do is just cut the edge off it a little bit like that okay just tidy it up as best you can you know all right so we got it like that right now it's a little bit time consuming but anything that's worthwhile doing is always time consuming so I don't mind doing this as long as it's going to produce more fish. Hey, all good. So what we do is we put the needle through the centre as best you can and just push it right through like so. All right. and just push it right up the, the, the needle like that. Just give it time for it to expand a little bit. Turn it around. Okay. Now that's done. You can also make money out of that. Just round it off with a pair of scissors and away you go. Alright guys, I'll show you what I made to make things easier. I've got a bit of pine here. And um, I've marked 20, 30, 40, 50 centimetres along the length of the pine. And I also glued a piece of cork on the end. Right. And that cork will allow me to sink the hook in it once it's tied to the leader and uh, it just makes uh, tying uh, the float, the little bead, on a lot easier. So I'll show you how we go about doing that. First of all, we'll put on the hook. All right, second of all, we'll put the little bead on. <clears throat> okay, because we've got a needle there, we have to thread the leader through the needle, like so, and then just pass it all the way through onto, onto your line, right? Okay, so you'll slide that up to your line, about there. I normally have it about two finger widths apart from the hook. It seems to work better that way. And now we'll determine how long we want the leader. Say I want it, say, 300 there. I'll cut it off at three, 350. Because by the time you tie the, your swivel on, you lose a bit of line. So you just grab your swivel and tie that on. All 
All right. Now, what I have one of these pins. You just use them on uh, little uh, boards, you know, your cork boards and all that. Um, I've got a, a, a few of these pins because I normally build ships and stuff like that. So I've got plenty of things like this lying around. So what I do is I put the hook in the cork at the end of the bit of pine. So I stretch it out a little bit and I put the little pin through it. All right? And that'll hold it like that. So what we want is the little bee, the little float bee in the middle there with the hook, the swivel and the line stretched out. All right? So now what we're going to do to stop this little bead or little float from moving up and down the line when you're fishing um, because when you're retrieving it'll go straight down to the hook you don't want that so what you've got to do is, is uh, tie two drop two stoppers on each side of that um, float I'll show you how to do that I'll just show you a close-up of what I'm doing here um, we got the cork right there with the hook then we got the bead and that will slide up and down and that's why we have to put some stopper knots on there and we have the swivel with the pin through it just holding everything in place okay so what we do is we'll wrap it around twice around the main line like that okay wrap it around twice around the main line and then around that loop, wrap it around twice. It's it's pretty much a double granny knot. That's that's all that is. And then pull that tight, like so, and do it again. I normally go around twice. And then once. Okay, with a close-up shot, I'll just put my hand behind it so you can see. You can see that that knot there is tied off, so the bead won't slide further than that. Now we have to tie another knot on that side there. All right, <clears throat> I'll show you how to tie this knot. All right, we'll go around the main line twice. One two and then it's essentially a double granny knot we'll go around there twice as well there we go pull that up tight All right now we do the same thing again go around twice and then one more time <coughs> that knot slides up and down so you can move this up or down if you like and just cut don't cut too close just leave, leave the little tag ends out that helps to stop the float and that's essentially it that little float can't go anywhere now If you wanted to move it up, let's go like that, as far up as you like actually. And that's it. Alright, now it's just a matter of taking the pin out and there you go. That's the one of the leaders, right? That's how simple it is. And um as you've seen in that video, it does catch fish. It, well, see, this this not only attracts the fish, what it is essentially does, it's, it's takes, it takes the weight off the hook and the bait. So it allows the bait to come off the bottom a bit. So you've got more movement there, 
Um, it's just not in, I'm sure that the fish would find this if it was in on the sand straight away. But an added bonus is that it keeps it up off the ground because it, it does float. And if you use a bit more of uh, the e plug, what did it float more? So you use a, a full e plug if you want uh, around the edges of the full e plug, and um, you can use it for bigger baits, big prawns or something like that. All right. All right, guys. The way I store all my traces is uh, with a piece of pearl noodle. It's, um, this is an offcut that I had when I was doing that yabby sieve. And uh, what I have here is I have a, a three-way swivel because um, I, I use two traces on my rig. So I'll show you how to set up uh, the way I did on my last video. Okay, let's just say that that's the main line there. You slide uh, your sinker on there. I normally use a ball sinker, but I mean, you can use any type of sinker. Uh, you can use a star sinker and all that, but um, I think for a running rig like that, the running sinker rig, uh, you're best off using a ball sinker. And also, it depends on uh, the conditions out there. If it's just too rough, you need a bigger sinker, obviously. All right, so we'll just rig it up normally like we would uh, for brim fishing. The first trace gets tied onto the bottom of your main line. Okay, and that'll slide right up to the sea. I mean, that's that's quite simple. Now, above that, about. I don't know, at about 300, 350 up from the sinker. What I do is I tie my other leader, which consists of a three-way swivel. So we'll take one out of here. And they're only, they're only short, these ones. I don't like making them long at all. Maybe just 200, that's it. So we'll just tie that on. Okay. Now this is your main line, remember, that, that part goes to your right. And we tie the main line onto the, the top of the rig. You'll get a clearer picture when I hold it up. I'm sure most of you know what I'm doing. Okay, let's have a good look at this. All right, that's the rig. That's the main line going up to your rod, right? Then you've got a dropper hanging off, about 20 centimeters long. You don't want it too too long. Uh, 300 or so from that, you've got your sinker. You tie on another swivel, and then you have your other leader. So that you're fishing with two hooks and that normally stays on the bottom now because there's so much movement in the surf and all that sort of stuff you'll have your leaders moving around and all that and these little beads um, work fantastic because they're just moving around attracting the fish to it but like you've seen in my uh, last video there's uh, the dart just move in sometimes and um, they'll they'll hone into this colour um, from quite a well from metres away so um, once they move in you, you're pretty much catching dart all the time you know you, you might have to move spot or something like that or go real early in the morning and catch your brim and 
maybe whiting and then come home with a feeder dart if, if they're big enough. Well guys, I hope you come away with something. As I always say in every video, I make pretty much now. Um, I enjoy teaching, I enjoy uh, showing people how to catch more fish. Look, um, I don't have any sons or anything, anyone to pass my knowledge on to. So um, YouTube's fantastic for this, you know, it's fantastic. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give me the thumbs up. And, um, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you to all my subscribers and I'll catch you in my next video.